Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek and VR News for July 17th. So just quickly before I launch into the news, I want to explain why I took a video down yesterday. Uh, some of you may have seen I had a video yesterday and even watched it uh, to do with Revive. Now, there's two methods I use primarily when I'm filming these videos. The main one is this one, which is basically done with uh, Logitech webcam software that I then bring into VSDC, which is a free video editing program. You know, if I want to insert pictures uh, or just do any kind of basic editing, cutting stuff. And I've got the audio on that just fine. The second method that I use is Open Broadcaster, and that tends to be if I'm doing gameplay footage with picture in picture. That seemed to have an issue yesterday. That was the format that I used. I must be something isn't right in Open Broadcaster. Uh, I'm not the best judge of audio. Um, I like music. I love music. I've probably gone to way too many loud concerts in my life, and as a result, I actually have a, a bit of hearing loss in both ears. So a lot of stuff that's in kind of that mid-range white noise, I lose it completely. Uh, some higher stuff, some lower stuff, I just don't hear it. So that's why I mentioned having my wife do a listen through. I didn't have her do a listen through of that. As soon as I read, I think there were two complaints about it in the comments. I had her check and she's like, yeah, it's echoey. I listen again. I just, I don't freaking hear it. It sounds fine to me. So... I took it offline because I do not want to release uh, that kind of, you know, crappy quality uh, if I'm aware of it. So I'm going to have her check those videos as well. That's down until further notice. I will put the revive video back up when I figure out the audio stuff, which is hopefully a little bit later today. In the meantime, I'm going to just continue to use this format for VR news because finally have the audio addressed on this. And I'll also use this format for kind of any opinion pieces that I do. There's one on the history of virtual reality uh, that I'm going to release later today. It'll be done in this format. So you can count on the audio at least being, you know, average <laughs> because uh, I think you'll all agree this sounds a lot better. Is there room for improvement still? Probably, absolutely. But, um, and we'll get there, but at least that lowest common denominator, I need that to be a lot higher than what was released yesterday with that other video on Revive. So look for that as soon as I get that addressed and that picture-in-picture -picture format. So on to the news, there is a Canadian company called Tech Gear, and they have you know, been in the media recently for offering a free HMD. That's a free VR HMD. But before we get way too excited about that and people start climbing over each other to get a free HMD, let's take a look at the reality of what they're offering and let's, let's categorize it, let's evaluate it, and then we can make the decision on if it's worth it or not. So the first thing to note is it's designed as really a Google Cardboard replacement, okay? Meaning the HMD has no screens, it has no significant moving parts or technology inside. It's a plastic resin molded holder for a Google Cardboard compatible phone. In fact, those are the apps that it plays. Google Cardboard, YouTube VR, uh, and that's basically it. With that said, obviously the most expensive component is going to be your phone. So if you have a good phone, and I'm gonna put a link in the description below on a list of compatible phones, and there's even some tablets on that. I don't know 100% if they're compatible with this device because you can make alterations with Google Cardboard. Like I figured out that my very first tablet that I owned, which was an Acer Iconia A500 is compatible. So I might get this just to test it on that and add it to the collection of VR stuff. My main concern with this is as with you know, that VR theater in Toronto in yesterday's news. It delivers one set of expectations, right? And that is, it's going to be a virtual reality experience. Let's face it, people who aren't in the know, they're going to go into this thinking, this is VR. Those of us who are in the know, obviously we know, just based on what I said, this is Google Cardboard equivalent, and that set up a specific set of expectations, i.e. you and me, 
we aren't expecting much. But for the layperson, you know, the person who isn't in the know, this could just destroy, uh, you know, a false idea or a valid idea that they had on what VR is with something that doesn't represent VR at large, right? It's not reflective of even a good quality seated VR experience, never mind room VR. It's cardboard VR. So if that's okay and that still kind of intrigues, absolutely get one of these. Like I said, I'm going to get one too just to evaluate it and try it on my Acer A500, see if it works on that. Uh, in my personal life, even though I'm not an Apple guy, I do have an iPhone and I do have uh, an iPad tablet. But as with most things, I also have the competition. I have Android tablets as well. Uh, Asus Transformer and the Acer A500. And sorry, a Samsung Tablet E, I believe it is, which I use at work. So let's, you know, stay tuned for that. I'll do an evaluation if that is of interest to anybody, uh, you know, marketing concerns aside, uh, you know, that might be a handy thing to have if you're just looking at specific style of content. So again, that'll be in the description below. Take a look, let me know what you think. There was a really interesting piece on Road to VR and the researcher's name is Oliver Kralos. I believe he's German. He did, and he works at UC Davis and he's, He's done a lot of virtual reality work in the past. Yeah, he's got articles, he's got uh, things written. Anyways, what he did, he because of the open VR software associated with the Vive product, he took apart the lighthouse and he basically set about trying to understand the tracking system and measure it because there's certain pieces of information that are out there kind of as spec literature that based on his findings had kind of been turned on their ears. So let me explain. And some of this is going to be technical. So I'm going to kind of break it down. Uh, I've made some notes just so that I don't miss the important points. But the belief was always that the lighthouses rotate, you know, 3600 RPMs, which is about 60 times per second and that only one laser at a time sweeps. So each lighthouse has a horizontal and a vertical laser, right? This way. <laughs> oh God, pat your stomach. You get the point, horizontal, vertical. With only one beam at any given time doing the scanning. At a hardware level, he found out, uh, because the thought was this happens about every 8.3 milliseconds or 120 hertz. That's what most people were led to believe. He found that the raw data was substantially faster with a substantially lower latency time. So what he did was he ran some tests and he found that the head tracking was actually being tracked at one millisecond, which, which is crazy, crazy fast. And the controllers were being tracked at 2.7 milliseconds. So not the eight that people thought. However, by the time it hits the software layer and goes through the conversion, it's at the higher associated rates. Now, the good news there is, you know, especially when we talk about a possible Vive 2.0, et cetera, the raw potential for Vive's tracking technology is crazy good. And while they're probably gonna innovate on terms of the HMD, and some of you pointed out as my personal opinion is that it might mostly be cosmetic, possibly better or less bulk on the unit, the cabling, right? Like just a more refined unit. It's good to know that they have that much headroom to work with. So think about that, uh, you know, without having to alter their lighthouse tech, they can focus on the other unit. So if you look at this from a brought to market with a certain subset or set of features, you can't help but admire the job that HTC and Valve have done with their product, right? They brought a fully comprehensive system to market, the chaperone, the camera enabled functionality. It delivers a nice at launch out of the box bundled experience. And with this additional tracking information, lots of headroom to grow and improve other aspects of the device, right? And that's not to take anything away from Rift. Like I said, it's a whole separate discussion. Room VR just hasn't been a focus. The technology is capable of it. 
We know we can use, you know, multiple uh, tracking systems, right, at a time for the Rift, but they haven't really focused on a chaperone system or really room VR beyond that. Nothing saying you can't get out of your seat in Elite and take a couple steps this way, that way. That all works as long as you're within view of the tracking system, you can go even more distance than that, but it's not bundled that way. So really cool article. Again, that will be in the description and I'm going to link the video as well. This guy is super technical. I'm an IT guy and he had me looking up stuff because it was, um, you know, I'm good with basic math assembly language type stuff, subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, but calculus and algebra, holy crap, just gone. So have a look. Let me know what you think.